So welcome to module 3.3, in this we will talk about building the memory hierarchy. Memory is something uh, which the system needs to remember over a period of time. So uh, we have already seen what a flip flop and latch is, now we will basically now go back and start looking at how do we use this flip flop and latch to build components in the circuit that will remember uh, the values over a period of time. The, the latch and the flip flop basically remembered, the latch actually remembered uh, for half a clock cycle while the flip flop actually remembered over one full clock cycle. So whatever came as an input at this passage uh, of the clock that was remembered till the next passage. Now with this feature can we go and build circuits that can remember things for uh, over, over, a over a period of time. So that is what we will be uh, covering in this memory hierarchy. Now let us look at the first uh, thing, as I told in the previous module, the D flip flop is assumed to be available uh, as a basic building block. Now what we are going to, uh, what we have constructed here is called bits. This can basically, this is called a bit to be uh, more precise, this can store one bit. What is the functionality of this? <coughs> when the load is 1, the load input is 1, at the positive edge of the clock that is tick, tick of the clock, if the load is 1. So at the positive edge of clock, if the load is 1, then in whatever in value moves into DFF in the diff and appears at out. at talk of the clock. So the clock goes as tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. So at the tick of the clock which we assume is a passage, if the load is 1, whatever was there in the, whatever is given at that input at the tick of the clock that will move into the D flip flop and appear at the out at the talk of the clock. Okay. If at the passage of the clock, if the load is actually 0, then whatever was inside the flip flop that will get again restored. So the flip flop basically remembers its previous value. So the value stored in this bit will change only when the load is 1 and the clock becomes tick and that value changed value will be reflected at the out at talk of the clock. So the clock goes as tick tock. If the load is 0 then the flip flop remembers across all the tick tocks till the load becomes 1. It is not just enough when the load becomes 1 the clock should also tick for that value in the in to go into the bit, right. So this is, this is the basic functionality of this what we call as a bit storage. This bit storage will be used to uh, <coughs> construct larger memory elements as we see here. Now before proceeding further with larger ele uh, elements, let me show a uh, uh, very small demo of this bit. So bit is project uh, uh, 3a, you will see that and this is the code. So this code we need to basically understand. So I will just open the bit code for you, yes. So I have assumed a D flip flop and now very carefully you have to note this is something which is very important the output actually 
has to come and feed back into the input. And if you had seen in module P2, the output cannot be used as an input. So, if the this is an out is actually an output variable of your chip and that cannot be used as an input. To facilitate this, the D flip flop is constructed in such a way, the D flip flop is constructed in such a way that there are as you see here, there are two outputs, out equal to out is the final output, but there is another out which is called f of out. Right. So, you could have two outs you can define, one is the f of out. So, this out is the final output, while this out can be tapped to take inside. So, we are just, just very quickly we can see here, this is what we are seeing. So, the now you can see that D flip flop actually takes the muxed in, this is the wire muxed in as you see here and the out is out, this is this line, this wire is actually called as F of out, flip flop out. This F of out is fed into a multiplexer, that multiplexer takes this F of out as one of the input and in as another input, in as another input and the select is the load and the out is mixed in. So, this will basically function in the way we have uh, shown this, right. So, this is the basic definition of bit. Now, we will run this bit to explain, uh, we will show you the demo here. So, the bit is loaded, I have loaded this file bit, right, loaded and now we will take the script for bit and load the script and it is here. So, what it will do load bit dot stl, load bit dot out, bit dot compare out dot list. Let us go step by step, let us run this step by step. So, we are setting into 0, load to 0, tick. That means, since load is 0, whatever is inside should be, uh, uh, so whatever is inside should be remembered. Let us assume that uh, with, uh, before starting of the simulation, the value inside the flip flop is 0. Now, when I say set in 0, load 0, nothing should happen, the old value should remain the same. So, let us start the simulation step by step. Let us keep watching what is happening here. Um, Okay. Let us uh, do this step by step. Uh, so, initially in is 0, load is 0, I do a tick output, talk output, nothing. Now, in is 0, load is 1, I have done a tick, now I am doing a talk nothing should change because out is already 0, in should be equal to out though load is 1. So, this is output. Now, in is 1 and load is 0, in is 1, load is 0, I am doing a tick, nothing will happen, um, I am doing a talk, nothing will happen. So, till that out is remain to be 0. Now, let us see this, I am making in 1 then I am going to make load 1, the moment I tick what will happen? Your uh, flip flop out should become 1 and when I talk the output should become 1, till then everything has been 0. Now, I am setting in as 1, load as 1, my mux in, since I gave tick my mux in. So, in is 1 here in is 1 here, load is 1 here. So, the max din has become 1 on the stick. Now, what we need to do on the talk, the output should also become 1. Now, I do a talk. Now, as you see the output has actually become 1. Now, I am making in is 0, load is 0 uh, and I do a tick, max input should become 0, but the output should not change, right. Uh, load is 0, the max input should remain the same and the output should not same. So, in is 0, load is 0, 
note that though my in became 0 my max input still remains 1 because your load is 0 here and then I now go and do a talk still the output will not change. Now I am making in 1 and load 0 again nothing should change so the output remains 1. Now I do in 0 and load 1 mm, so my max input should become 0 now because load is 1 at the end of the stick x max input became 0 and now at the talk your output should also become 0 yes. So, what you do is that these inputs that are given here are called clocked inputs. So, in a chip where there are clocked inputs and clocked outputs the clock you set the input and do a tick of the clock it is called tick as you see here then the input will enter the chip and then the output will be computed but the output will be revealed out when you do a talk. So, this is how the clock to chip works tick it enters talk it is it comes basically comes out as a uh, output. So, the entire script that you are seeing here which is already written for you and available it just sets the input uh, the inputs are in and load it does tick and checks what is the output yes then it does talk then tick it sets the input it does tick then talk the output will come. So, set the input do tick then talk then again set the input do tick then talk so the outputs will be coming out again and again. So, this is how uh, you can simulate this clocked sequential circuit between a tick and a talk uh, the, the value is remembered and when the load is 0 the value is remembered for lot amount of time when the load is 1 the, the circuit will take in the new in fresh input on a tick and talk, but when the load is 0 the, the bit will retain its value for uh, for long amount of tick and talk as long as load remains 0 the value will be remembered irrespective of the number of ticks and talks. So, this is how we construct one element one bit that could be remembered for as much our time we want right by adjusting the value of load I can make it remember something I can make it uh, load a new value right. So, this is the basic element and we have shown the simulation of how this element works right. Now, the next thing that we will see <coughs> is the register. So, how do you make a register? So, I have to make a w bit register normally we will be using a 16 bit register here. What is a register again the same thing uh, a, a w bit register is works as follows if you make load equal to 1 then the the value in 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 the in should get stored else old value should be remembered load is 1 and again the value in the in should get stored on tick else old value should be remembered that is the that is the um, here. So, what we did for 1 bit we need to now do for w bits. So, w bits make so 1 bit 1 bit was constructed using a d flip flop now we take that bit and repeat it w times to basically get this uh, w bit register. So, that is very simple so instantiate w the bits say w times inside the same load will go to all the bits the bit has two inputs right the load and the uh, in and you are we want to store w different bits using this register. So, the load is common for all the bits instantiation, but the input will be in 0 to in w minus 1 for each of these bit and the output you will be tapping from each of the bit that will be out 0 to out w minus 1. So, this is how I construct a register wherein w bits can be stored when the load is 1 and uh, 
in and and um, the w bits can be retrieved right they are being stored here and then you can take the value of these w bits at any point of time so this is how we construct a register a register is a, is the first in the storage hierarchy uh, inside a processor the register remembers some value uh, over a period of time and this can remember say a w bit value in the in the real project we will be doing a 16 bit register so it can basically remember 16 bits across many ticks and talks so if your load becomes one and you give a tick whatever is there on the input of the register will go and get saved if and if as long as maintain load equal to zero that value will be remembered irrespective of number of ticks and talks you are going to get of the clock so so register is a clocked sequential storage element which can store multiple bits and uses the bit uh, primitive that we have just uh, coded okay so <coughs> now the next thing that we will do is that we have now designed a register now how do we design a memory memory will store collection of values so a register is storing 116 bit a memory can store multiple such 16 bits suppose I want to so what is the memory here suppose I want to store 16 say 8 16 bits values let me call those values as value 0 value 1 to value 7 let these values be stored at r0 r1 to r7 so v0 will be stored in r0 v1 will be stored in r1 v2 will be stored in r2 v7 will be stored in r7 now i want to do two operations on this so i am trying to remember a collection of values that is why we call it as a random access memory or ram So, V0 is stored in R0, V1 is stored in R1, V2 is stored in R2, V7 is stored in R7, each is a 16 bit number as you see here, right. So, with this memory, I want to do two operations. The first operation, let us call it as a read operation. I want to give that address, right. I want to give that address and I basically want to read what is there in that address. So, how many addresses I have? I have 8 different addresses namely address 0, 1, 2 till 7. In binary to represent that address I need 3 bits. These are this select or address bits that you see here. The 3 bits I am marking in blue here. Let me call it A0, A1, A2 the same 3 bits are given to the select. Now, whatever I marked in red here is responsible for the read operation. Right? So, what how do you do the read? So, V0, V1, V2, V7 they are all 16 bit uh, uh, values and 8 such value you just put a mux 8 way 16 and give the address bits here you will get an output which is again 16 bits and that output will correspond to whichever value you want to read. So, if I put 0 0 0 as this address bit here then I will get the value of V0. If I put 0 1 0 here I will get the value of V2. If I put 1 1 1 I will get the value of V7. So, the read operation is basically taken care of by this circuit which is shown in red which is a MUX 8 way 16 circuit and it has a uh, select the you give the address and you can collect whatever value from this. So, this is basically called the read operation. Similarly, on the other side I will have something called the write operation. So, what we do in the write operation here? Write operation is very straightforward. Uh, now, 
the, the black circuit that I am putting here will be re responsible for the write operation. Whatever you want to write, you put on this in as I am showing in green here, whatever you want to write, you put on the in wire. This is again W bits or 16 bits for us in this case. So, that in will be available for register R0, R1, R2 to R7. So, the in will be available to each one of these registers. Now, which uh, so then you use the DMUX here and give this load signal to this, the load will become 1. If I want to do a read, the load is 0. If I want to do a write, the load becomes 1. So, this DMUX, if I, so suppose I want to write that value of in to say V3, right. Let me put V3 here, which is R3. this is L2, L3. So, I give 0, 1, 1 as an input here. What will the DMUX do? It will make L3, 1 and L0, L1, L2 to L7 remaining things are 0. So, exactly L3 alone will become 1. That means, the load of this particular register R3 will become 1. And then when I give a tick, whatever is there on the in will just get stored into V3. So, suppose I want to store some uh, this this V3 will now become suppose I have put R some value R it's a 16 bit value now this V3 will become R. So, I basically put a DMUX to which I feed a load signal that and uh, whichever address I want to write I make load is equal to 1 give that address to the DMUX then the corresponding load line will become 1 for that address alone, the remaining addresses the load line will become 0 and now whatever I want to write I am giving in the in value that I want to write I am giving in the in wire as you see here and that in will be fed to all the registers and so what happens is that register which I have selected using this DMUX by that load line that register will basically and you give a tick then that register will get the value R. So, a DMUX is basically used for the write operation and a MUX is actually used for a read operation. This is how using 8 registers we can basically construct a RAM 8 which is 8, 8, 8, 8 16 bits it can store. This is a random access memory and the more importantly what do you do with the random access memory? you give a address and you go and write into it or give an address and you go and read from it. If you give an address and you want to write into it, we also make load equal to 1. So, you give the address, you give the data in the in and you make load equal to 1 uh, and give a tick then in that address that whatever data you are given in in will get stored. Similarly, if you give uh, the address, uh, just the address and load of course is 0, then uh, and you give uh, a tick and then a talk, then whatever is stored in that address will get retrieved as a note. The multiplexer is responsible for retrieving the value, the demultiplexer is responsible for uh, you know uh, writing into it. So, we in this case the DMUX 8 can be used. Uh, and here make MUX 8 way 16 can be used. So, this is how we build a RAM 8 from, uh, from, from registers. So, we have built a register using bits, now we have constructed a RAM 8 using this registers. Now, the next thing that we will be doing is we can construct a RAM 64 using RAM 8 and that is very easy, right. So, now we construct many RAM 8s here, RAM 8 R0, RAM 8 R1 till RAM 8 R7. So, instantiate 7 RAM 8s here uh, and then uh, so, so if I want to address 64 elements 
right if I want to address 64 elements if I want to address 8 elements I need 3 bits if I want to address 64 elements I need 6 bits 8 elements the address will be 0 1 2 till 7 so 8 different combinations which is 2 power 3 so I need 3 bits 3 bits will be 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 till 1 1 1 so if I want 64 then it becomes 6 bits which is 0 1 2 2 63 which will be 0 0 0 0 this is 2 power 6 64 is 2 power 6. Sixty four is two power six. So I need six bits. Right. So <coughs> so how do you build a RAM sixty four? So we put eight RAM eights, which essentially becomes eight into eight is sixty four. Now <coughs> there are six address bits. The so there is A six, A five, A four, A three. A2, A1, A0. This A5, A4, and A3 will tell me which RAM 8 I need to select. So note that in the first RAM 8, the address 0 to 7 will be there. In the second RAM 8, 8 to 15 will be there. In the third RAM 8, it will be 16 to 23, right. So, so let us now look at it very carefully. In RAM 0, the address is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 will be there. In R1, in uh, RAM, RAM, RAM 8 R1, we will have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1 will be there. The RAM 2 will have 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. In RAM 3, it will be 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 to 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, these are all the addresses that will be there. So, the first 3 bits identifies which RAM I need to go, which RAM 8 I need to go. Where should I go to R0 or R1 or R2? The first three bits will tell me. First three bits means A5, A4, A3, the most significant bits. The last three bits, namely A2, A1, and A0, will tell me within that RAM which location I need to access, right? So, within that RAM, which location I need to access. So, how do you construct this RAM 64 now? You put a DMUX with A5, A4, A3 that will give me L0 to L7 which will select which RAM I need to take, right. And in each of these RAM, for each of these RAM modules put the A2, A1, A0, A2, A1, A0 for all the of them and within that RAM it will select which location, right. So, you instantiate 8 times this RAM 8 and for each of these RAM 8 there is a load that we need to give that load will basically come from the DMUX which is selected using F, A5, A4, A3. So, that will tell me which RAM should I select as we have seen here and within each RAM I use A2, A1, A0 to select uh, the address within the, the one of those 8 within those 8 that are stored there. And so, each RAM will give me some value, right. And then again I use this A5, A4, A3 to select from which whose RAM value I need to take. So, the read operation works like this, A5, A4, A3 will tell you from which RAM I want the data and A2, A1, A0 will tell me from that RAM which one of those 8 data I need. So, I give A2, A1, A0 to each of these RAMs. So, each one will give me the corresponding. So, suppose I want to read 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 or 1, 1, 0. This 1, 1, 0 will be given to each one of these 8 RAMs. So, the 6th location 1, 1, 0 is 6. 
the sixth location for each of this ram will come here. So, I will get 8 such <coughs> inputs from those 8 I need to select the second one that is 0 1 0. So, this mux 8 way 16 will select me the second of those uh, uh, values that I am the, 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 the sixth location value coming from the second ram will be selected by this uh, mux 8 way 16. So, this blue color what I have put here is going to be responsible for reading from this RAM. Similarly, for writing into the RAM, the same way I put this input here, this I n as I am marking in green here is, uh, is connected to all these registers. The A 5, A 4, A 3 in the DMUX that is there, uh, that will select which RAM sh should I write. So, if I want to write into 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, so, 0, 1, 0 is given here. So, so that second RAM L2 will basically be enabled. This will be enabled. All the other, other things are disabled. Now, this in value is fed to all of them. So, I, so I want to write into the second RAM sixth location, right. Uh, so, second RAM. Um, Sixth location, correct. And so, so here A2, A1, A0 is given as six, right? One one zero is given into the second RAM. So the load is given there. So in the next tick, the sixth location of second RAM will be returned the value that is given in in, right? So this is how the write operation happens into the RAM sixty four, right? So, so, so what we have done now. We have basically built a RAM, a bit from D flip flop we got a bit, from that bit we got a register and we used uh, 8 such register to build RAM 8, now use that 8 RAM 8s to build RAM 64, right. <coughs> right. Now, we will use 8 such RAM 64 to build RAM 512. So, we want to build RAM 512, 512 is 2 power 9, so we need 9 bits to do that. Now, we will put, we have already done 64, so we put RAM 64, we will call it as R0, R1 to R7, to address this we need 6 bits. Six address bits. Those six address bits are so we have nine bits, right? A eight, A seven, A six, A five to A naught, right? So we will give A five, A four to A naught for each of them. Each of them will get that A five, A four to A naught, and there'll be an in which is coming to each. So here again, I put a DMUX. wherein I put the load signal and I put A8, A7, A6 as the select signal and this will go for L0, L1, L7. So, so suppose I want to write into location 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, right. So, 0, 0, 1 will make L1, so 0, 0, 001 is fed into this DMUX. So, this will make L1 true and in L1 this A5 to A0, so uh, this 110111 111, that is the location given here. In that location, whatever you are putting on in, let me say o, o, I1, in that location within R1, this I1 basically gets stored. Note that R1 is enabled, R1's load is enabled and whatever value in will get in, right. So, this is for the write operation where you make load equal to 1, then it will whatever is there in in will go and sit into that particular location here. Now, how do you do? So, internally RAM 64 will take 6 bits and 
it will store in the location. We have already seen how RAM 64 works. Now, again uh, for uh, read operation, each one of them uh, will give me 8, uh, 16, 16 bits. Again, I make uh, uh, so mux mux 8 way 16 and I give this a 6, a 7, a 8 and I get this 16 bit output. So, suppose I want to read 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 is given to R 0, R 1 to R 7, they will give the corresponding 8 bits in that location out of all the 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 locations that 8 locations I am seeing, the I need the 1 from the RAM number 1. So, this 0, 0, 1 will select the output of the RAM number 1 and give it to you. Right. So, this blue fellow will be responsible for reading. Okay. So, using RAM 512, uh, using RAM 64, we have built RAM 512. Now, using RAM 512, 512 into 8 is 4096. So, I can build what we call as RAM 4K. How do I build RAM 4K? RAM 4K actually needs 12 bits. So, we need A9, A10, A11. So, the same structure instead of RAM 64, uh, you make it RAM 512. This is RAM 4K, right? You make it RAM 512 here, and here you give from instead of A0 to A5, you give from A, uh, A8, uh, A0 to A8. 9 bits and here you give a, 11, uh, a 9, a 10, a 11, a 9, a 10, a 11. Same circuit just instead of 4K make it 512 and uh, instead of uh, last time we had RAM 64 instead of 64 you make it 512 each one of them give 9 bit address rather than 6 bit address and this select this is test 3 inputs. So, this will give me RAM 4K, it will exactly work how the RAM, the explanation for RAM 512, uh, how did we build 512 from 64, the same explanation now is valid for 4K for 512. Now, using RAM 4K, we can build RAM. <coughs> we can build RAM 16K. So, how do you build RAM 16K? We just need 4 of this 4K. So, RAM 16K can be built as follows. Sixteen K is 2 power 14, right? 2 power 10 is 1K, 2 power 4 is 16K, 16K is equal to 2 power 14. So, we need 14 bits, address bits starting from A13, A12, uh, A11 to you know. So, you put RAM 4K here, RAM 4K 4 times. So, that will give me RAM 16K for sure and give A11 to A0, 12 bit address for each. And whatever output is coming here, this is going to be mux 4 way 16 and you are going to get an output here, 16 bit output and you give this A12 and A13 as inputs. So, I have to select so from this and then here you have a DMUX. 
So, you basically give a load signal here, this is Dmux uh, 4 way and you give your A12 and A13 here and this will go for L0, L1, L2, L3 and of course, the in which is 16 bit is connected to all of them. So, set the address bits made load equal to 1 then the corresponding uh, thing and set your input data give a tick your data gets entered and similarly give the address and give your load uh, make load 0 give the address and uh, give a tick a talk then your output basically gets this. So, this is how read write operations can happen on a RAM 16 k. So, what we have done in this module is we started with a bit we then made a register then we went again and then made a, 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 a RAM 8 which can store 8 16 bit values then made a RAM 64 <coughs> then 512 then 4 K then now 16 K. So, all this. So, this is there as project 03 A directory project 03 B directory we can do this different RAM. Uh, so, project A basically has bit and RAM 8 and RAM 16 this B has RAM 512 uh, 4K and 16K right and there are test routines for this you can just go ahead and do this. So, with this we have talked about uh, the uh, memory hierarchy building the memory hierarchy. We will now go to the next module where we will design something called a program counter. <coughs>